October 17th. Yes, that's what it was. Calendar. Nailed it. 2017, I'm one of your hosts, Ford Jerry, and alongside me as always, that retro code, Edward Varnell. Son of the Hedgehog 1 is garbage, but hello, everybody. Uh, that's the uh, the best Sonic the Hedgehog game. No, I, that's I Sonic like 2. You. So, um, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 is the best Sonic game. Not that, <laughs> like, Sonic games are great, but actually, you know what? I take that back. Sonic Mania might be the best Sonic game. Followed closely mm. by Sonic 1. Uh, Sonic 2 is still the best. Yeah, yeah. Once you once you start getting all of his friends involved, it's like meh. So, uh, Ed, hi. I feel like I haven't seen you in forever again. Once again, you haven't. I know. <laughs> we we've been busy missing each other. Our our past have been like this. <laughs> Go this way. Yeah, I know. It's been like uh, it was a busy weekend. It was uh well it was. Mine and my wife's one year anniversary, so I told her I won't record any sh- podcasts. I won't. I won't play any games, even though I snuck some game time in yesterday. Uh, but you know, we just we did a lot of stuff for our anniversary, and today we're going over to my parents as soon as we're done recording. So this might be a little bit shorter episode. Uh, but uh, did she get her gift? Yeah, yeah, she liked it. She loved it. So Yay. that was exciting, and so. Uh, yeah, it was a long weekend. Or not like a long weekend. It was just like a different weekend than what I'm used to. Uh, we went out to eat, and then we watched some movies and did a bunch of stuff. So it was a good time. It was a good time. Yes. Uh, but yeah, man, I uh, dude, my Titan in Destiny was ugly. <laughs> <laughs> we had and this conversation I... yesterday, but. When you when you sent me a message yesterday, I was the well, reason why I was laughing because I just pictured you saying she ugly, <laughs> and I just and I pictured your voice just saying that, and I almost rolled off the bed cracking up. Me and Jesse was literally cracking up. I'm like I'm dying because <laughs> <laughs> no. it was so funny. No, dude, she she was ugly. I mean, I'll talk about this on Arsenal next uh, next week or when we record the next episode. But like, man, dude, my Titan was so ugly. I had to make a new one, and that's what I've been doing. I've been trudging through that campaign again with a new Titan. I put all my good gear in the vault, <clears throat> deleted my Titan, made a new one, and now I feel better. Feel better about myself. Oh, it was rough, man. It was rough, but. And what have you been playing? Uh, so, uh, Rayman Legends, I have started playing. Just love that game. Uh, Rabbids and Mario, still playing that. Uh, Near Automata, uh, I, I'm still playing, doing the boys' version. Uh, actually about to start up uh, Wolfenstein 1 and uh, New Blood, the, ex- the expansion pack. Want to try to get that done before next Friday. Um, because Wolfenstein 2 and Mario Odyssey is coming out next week, so I want to be done with that. Um, been playing Steam World Dig on my 3DS. Uh, put Metroid Simmons Return to the side uh, and Dragon Quest to the side again. Just started playing Steam World Dig and just enjoying that, like wasting time in that. Uh, but the big game I have been playing is Halo 5, and still that game is just so good looking. Um, after the show, definitely I'm heading out to Best Buy to finally get my memory card, because I want to get Yono and the Celestial Elephant. That game looks so up my alley, and I'm so ready to play that, that game. Came out, that came out this past week, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, and there's probably going to be some more Switch games I'm um, going to be picking up for 3DS because uh, I need some more Switch games. And uh, I just love the Switch. Like, literally, he <laughs> just love this. I know. System. I love the Switch, too, dude. My, <clears throat> dude, And we're going to talk about this in a little bit. But my October and November have gotten super busy for Switch. Like, yeah, I don't I don't know. Which, <laughs> Whoa, oh bless you. Me. Which I have a question. Um are we doing a unboxing Friday? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do an unboxing uh that's this Friday, isn't it? Dang. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it's going to be have to be after work, though, when I get off, because I work all day. Okay. Uh, but we are go- Ed and I are going to do a, a dual unboxing of the uh, Fire Emblem <laughs> Collector's Edition. So yes. Before we get into like news and stuff, and before you finish about what you're playing and stuff, like mm-hmm. this is my October, November for Switch. Are you ready? And I don't know how this is going to happen. NBA 2K18 comes out. Well, it's out physically by the time this goes up. Okay. Fire Emblem Warriors, Knights of Azure 2, Super Mario Odyssey, Azure Striker Gunvolt, Monopoly. That's October. That's just October. November, Sonic Forces, Doom, which we'll get to in the news. Yes. Uh, the Zelda Champions Amiibo. Which I got to pick up. Batman, uh, the Telltale game, it's coming to Switch on the on the fourteenth. Ellie yes. Noir, Lego Marvel Super Heroes two, Rhyme, Skyrim, Axiom Verge, and Resident Evil Revelations one and two, and then you got uh, Xenoblade Chronicles on the first of the summer. Yes, that's <laughs> that's like, whew. and then somewhere in there you got WWE two K eighteen and and Red Out Red Out's like that. Uh, Hydro Thunder slash yeah F Zero kind of game, and we still are getting like probably Neo Geo Classic games coming out. Like we still got indie games. Coming oh yeah, out that on had that, that not even counting the indie stuff that I'm looking forward to. And it's just like how yeah. am I gonna do all this? Right Dude, now? like I, I know Rhyme is uh uh and definitely with when we get into news about Doom, but Rhyme is like a double dip game for me, like. I not only want to play on Switch, I I want to hear the music through my headphones with this game because the the soundtrack for Rye and uh I don't know I think my review was up on NG if yep. it's not on, if it's not up there uh but the guys do check out my review for uh, Rhyme on uh NGR because this game is like fantastic and I think it's worth um the purchase. Uh, but dang, that means I gotta get up to your <laughs> level of games. Now, I'm, I, Monopoly, I'm not gonna do. I, that's just, I, I just can't play board games. On, well, I'm getting on it because system. I'm getting it because Son and I, uh, you know, Son and I play games together, and that's one that she'll uh, play with me. You know. Oh, also, I forgot. <sighs> Snipper Clips physical copy is coming. Yes, that uh, I am buying. Man, I'm. St- Gosh, GameStop's app is so bad. It always says I have zero pre-orders until you refresh the page like 40 times. And it, <laughs> then it'll just say error. And then you have to close the app and then reopen it. Ugh, sorry. Uh, I'm just... Yeah. Okay. So uh, I was going to see what else. I was going to see if I missed anything. But anyways, continue with what you're playing, Ed. Uh, uh, but pretty uh, Halo Five is what I've been playing. Um, and going to be starting up Dead Space a little bit later on this month. For I think that's going to be my Halloween game. Um, uh, and then I gotta plan out what I'm going to do for my Thanksgiving game. Uh, uh, my three Thanksgiving games before I go to work for Black Friday. Uh, and and that is I pick uh. Three games I have that's just been in my backlog and just play two hours of that game, uh, and you know just just play it to see what I think if I like it if I could beat it or not. Uh, so I still got to get that figured out. But uh, yeah, I there's just me juggling around with so many games right now. It's just crazy. But uh, Halo Five. Um, it's a big one, uh, but like I said, I'm gonna be picking. I'm gonna be picking up a lot of Switch games, probably about two hundred fifty dollars worth. Um, yeah. Of, of games. Oh man, dude, I'm so excited for all these Switch games. I'm like, I, I don't, I like, I don't even know how I'm gonna do all this right now. But uh, hey, hey, I'm, I, I'm not getting anything else for any other system because like nothing this fall really interests me. Right. Any other system like Shadow of War, take it or leave it. I didn't care for the first one, and I know a lot of people are playing it right now. Uh, but like, I want I'm taking this fall on other consoles to revisit things. To like, I don't know. Either we're gonna co-op through Halo Five for sure. You, me, and Jesse. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, yes. You know, I'm I'm really enjoying Destiny. I kind of want to mid max my characters before the expansion comes out. Uh, mm -hmm. But everything that I've really in that I'm really interested in this fall is for Switch. You know, uh, it's just. I don't, I'm I'm glad there's nothing else on any other console that I'm really interested in because I, I, I have all. I know, I mean, I know for me, Cup like still getting Cuphead, Evil Within too. Um, I still got to pick up the regular Evil Within, um, Legacy, uh, the Lost Legacy, and Hell, uh, Hellblade, and the uh, the Horizon DLC. Like that's the only other stuff. And Need for Speed Payback. That that's the only thing else that I'm buying for the other systems. And Wolf Design too. Everything else is literally all Nintendo. Like I just picked up Monster Hunter Stories, and then going to be picking up. Um, uh, ever oasis when I get a chance, but yeah, I, everything just like you, Corey, is like literally all switch, yeah. And like, there's games that I'm interested in, like, I'm interested in South Park and Assassin's Creed, but like, my birthday, Hanukkah, and Christmas are all coming up, and like, I need to save some stuff for <laughs> people to get me. <laughs> like, if people ask me what I want, I'm like, uh, these things, please, <laughs> so uh, but like. And San and I already decided that, like, you know, money money on other things is kind of tight. So, like, for my birthday, like, we're just going to hang out and watch movies and eat pizza and cook, like, ha do some weird things with food. and uh, But, yeah, man, there's just, like, there's nothing that I'm, like, itching to play on other consoles, you know? Like, don't get me wrong, Assassin's Creed looks really interesting. Mm -hmm. But Assassin's Creed always looks interesting, and then when I play it, I'm disappointed. Like, the last game I really had a lot of fun with was Black Flag, and, like, I don't know, man. I just, even going back to Assassin's Creed 2 on the Ezio collection was like, man, this is rough. This is really rough <laughs> exactly. to go back to. And that game is, like, less than 10 years old at this point, and it's just like, man, this is rough to go back to. So... Uh, so in South Park, like there's still rumors that it could get ported to Switch in the in the spring, so like I'm still kind of hesitant on whether or not I should get that. And you know, I don't know, man. It's just there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of things that are are kind of moving into this direction where like I would rather play Switch, anyways. And so I'm gonna be getting all my games on Switch. Yeah, I, I'm waiting. I think for Black Friday uh, to see what sales go on to go work, start working on my backlog of getting games and stuff. Because, uh, because not worried about the price and stuff, but I'm just like, there's just so much new stuff that I need to get first before I actually go back to getting the old stuff. Like, um, I'll probably stop at Target because K Store is only twenty five dollars mm -hmm. this week. So I'm like, well, I might as well pick this up. Um and then just start getting some indie games and everything and just working from there. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I still have to beat games like Hellblade. I still need to go back to and finish. Uh, I still need to uh play through Gears Four again because I was I was ha like I played it a little bit the other night and then mm -hmm. uh my Xbox is sort of our Netflix machine and then Sana knows how to work the Xbox to get to Netflix. And I don't really feel like teaching her how to use the PS4. <laughs> but, uh, so we, so I kind of stopped playing it, but like, I need to go back and finish that. I need to, uh, I have a bunch of stuff on Xbox that I haven't played yet. Like, I don't know. This just seems like a good time f on the other consoles to finish games instead of you know purchasing new ones so uh that's kind of my fall that's the plan at least switch games and then revisiting old games so uh did you make did you write your list out of games that you need to work on for your systems i did or not yet I, okay. I well i started uh so like hellblade is at the top of that list so uh you know once once i finish doing this stuff in Destiny. I'm going to revisit Hellblade. Uh, I want to play Metal Gear 5, actually. Yeah. Uh, since it was free on PlayStation Plus. I wish... Man, I wish it was on Xbox, though. Because, like... I just... I feel like a game like that 
feels better with the Xbox controller. Like I just I think the Xbox controller and the Switch Pro controller just because they're very similar like uh-huh. I just think that they feel better than the PlayStation controller and I just especially for like a shooter kind of like a cover based shooter like that like I don't know man I wish I wish it was on Xbox so I might go out and look for it on Xbox but you know I need to I need to play that I would like to play through Tomb Raider Definitive Edition again uh-huh. Uh I just I really I've really had an itch to go back and play Rise of the Tomb Raider, but I want to play the first one first because I want to compare them and see how much Rise of the Tomb Raider really changed up the formula, you know. Uh but uh and then there's a couple Wii U games I want to get back to. So uh, uh so like I yes. I actually I hooked up my Wii U again. Uh it's been sitting in a in a green Bin over here with the games. Cause I, <laughs> well, I took it over to I took it over to my parents because they were babysitting my cousin's kids, and uh-huh. the Wii U is a pretty decent system for them. You know, it's, it's easy to wrap their mind around. So they were playing a lot of New Super Mario Brothers and some of the Lego games and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, kind of the list I've been working on. Also, I've had this weird weird thing where I wanted to go back and play some Disney Infinity stuff. Uh, oh, wow. Just because, like, I'm looking at the figures on on the, on the my shelves, and, like, I just, I feel like they're not getting used. <laughs> not that not that that's why I bought them, but I bought them because I'm a huge Disney fan. Yeah. And, like, they just all look really, really cool together. Like, oh, my gosh, you saw them when you were over here. They just all look yes. so good together. Uh, so, uh, that's kind of been it. And I kind of want to play through Halo four and five again, which, you know, we kind of have plans to do that. So, yeah, I gotta, I gotta touch Halo four. I haven't touched it yet, but, um, I'm just so in number five. I think I'm halfway done with the game because, uh, where Master Chief and the other guy, the, they actually meet and fight. So now I'm on the part where, uh, I guess uh, the other guy and whoever he was talking to, you know, portrayed him. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm at the part where I think it's mission nine because it's Master Chief's turn. So it's picking up after he um, froze your, uh, the other guy and then they're going off from there. I got to find out what his name is. I just Locke. didn't pay attention. Are you talking Locke. about Locke? Yeah, the black dude. Yeah. He's an actor. Yeah, it's Mike Coulter. Okay. He's uh he's Luke Cage in uh well he's Luke Cage in the Marvel series and he's in a lot of other stuff. Uh, but I think they changed the voice actor because he signed on to do Luke Cage. So like they have his appearance, but his voice is someone else. So it's a little weird. It's like a little weird <laughs> just because like. We recently rewatched Luke Cage because of the Defenders is out, and yeah. my my wife my wife doesn't care about Daredevil or Iron Fist, but she really loves Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. Uh-huh. So we've kind of been we're trying to work ourselves up to watching the Defenders on Netflix, and like I recently revisiting Halo Five, I always forget that Mike Coulter is the player model but not the voice so it just it really throws you off either way like watching him or playing halo 5 that just like wow that's not his voice (laughs) at all wow so uh but yeah anyways uh i guess i mean besides destiny i've been playing i've been playing a lot of the super nintendo classic yeah i've been i've been working my way through Super Mario World, and I want to beat every level in every way that it can possibly be beat. And, like, you know, I, I've i never fully beaten Super Mario World before. Really? Like, well, I mean, I think we had this conversation the day we got the Super Nintendos. We're like... Yeah. I had, I had always gone over to my friend's house, and he had already unlocked all the, wor- all the levels and all the worlds. Right. Uh-huh. And so, like, we would just kind of pick and choose which levels. Like, 
okay, you know you go to the first, uh, or you go to that uh, second level to get Yoshi, and then you work your way up into World 2 in that first, the first level of World 2 to get the cape. Uh, and then, you know, we would always try to, like, just replay the castles, because the castles were so fun. Uh, so, like, that's kind of what I've been doing with that, is, like, oh, man, Su uh, Super Mario World is really good. And, like, after that, I want to play through Super Mario RPG. Uh, uh. But, I mean, man, that game is... Like, I've been such a Super Mario 3... Uh, person for so long on like what the best 2d mario game is and like even though super mario brothers 2 is my favorite i still think like 3 is a better game uh-huh but man playing through super mario world is like i might have to change my stance on that because it is just so good it is just <laughs> so good see it's it's so weird with like 2d games like like for me if <laughs> I because people don't want to include Yoshi's Island, and I kind of do want to include it. Well, that's that's what I want to play after Super Mario World because I've never uh, I've never beaten Yoshi's Island either. Like I've always think, I've always played it, but I've never like finished it. Yeah, Yoshi's Island bosses are tighter than uh, Mario World's bosses. Yeah, like the boss where like it's stuck to like the potted plant, and you have to push the plant off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like I, I've, uh, I've watched a lot of let's plays of of Yoshi's Island, and like I because I want to play it, and I'm like, well, I don't want to go in like blind just because like I want to save myself time, and I've got a lot of other things to do, you know. So like right. while I'm playing something, I'll watch let's plays of stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, Yoshi's Yoshi's Island's next, and Super Mario World, man, it's a, uh, it's it's it's. Really, really good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I gotta hook up my uh, Super NES Classic and uh, start working more on Secret of Man. I just love that game. As many times as I beat that game, I just can't like really stop getting getting a lot of good playtime with it. And right. then I'm definitely going to dive into Final Fantasy 3. That is the game that I need to beat this year. Yeah, <laughs> for the first time. Yeah, I uh, I think I think next year I'm gonna start really keeping a list of like games that I've beaten or games, you know, like a, like a games list of things that I've beaten, <laughs> I guess is yeah. what that would be. But uh, yeah, it's the Super Nintendo is such a classic, I guess, without <laughs> using <laughs> yeah. a word to literally, but you know, it's, it's man, I really am sad that I missed out on Super Nintendo. Uh, um, until like really late so uh, but let's get into some of these news bits are you yes. ready are you ready Woohoo! yes okay so nintendo uh posted uh something on their facebook page about doom for switch doom for switch is coming out on november 10th which is uh what well, the original rumored date was december 13th so mm -hmm. this is uh, a little over a month earlier than we expected, which really sucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> not that like I'm not looking forward to Doom. It's just like <laughs> Doom is Doom is coming out really earlier than I thought it was. I thought I was going to have a little bit of breathing room, <laughs> but right. But it's okay. I'm excited for Doom. I know too, it, and and that's why I'm just like that sucks because I might like, even though it does fall on payday for me. Uh, I'm like, uh, I'm I'm still working on Mario Odyssey. I'm like, now I gotta try to finish this, trying to get through Doom. I'm like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, Doom is Doom is a game that I'm looking forward to playing, and like, I've already played through Doom on Xbox One, mm -hmm. but just I just want the physical copy on Switch to like. Not say that I have it, but I want to play it. I want to sit, see how good it looks on the go. I want to play it again, and like I think that this is just a really good opportunity to do that. Yeah, I have I have it for Xbox One, and I haven't finished it finished it yet. So I'll probably finish it on Switch, unless uh, I mean I got to finish it on one because I got to get it get it off my list. Um, but I do want to get it for Switch definitely, like that and Wolfenstein too. I definitely got to have. Yeah. 
uh, so. Speaking of games coming to Switch, Just Dance 2018 on the Switch will feature some exclusive content for Nintendo's platform. Players will be able to play, will be able to use Mario-inspired maps and some dance moves as well. Uh, Just Dance was one of the very first third-party games confirmed for Switch, and will be out October 24th. Uh, so, cool. Yeah, I wonder if they're gonna have that jazz song that that's in the Mario Odyssey. That'd be cool. I was thinking like uh, the <laughs> Super Super Mario Brothers Super Show end credits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> oh man, uh, I love that show. Love this theme, man. Uh, yeah. <sighs> so, games for, games on sale section has been added to the Switch eShop. Uh, so you can find out which games are on sale. And, uh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. That's a cool new feature. Uh, I'm glad games are starting to go on sale. <laughs> yeah, because they... I was When I was going through the list on the eShop uh, uh, Friday, just looking at to see what was on sale. It was like one game on sale. I'd be like, uh, why is this not displayed that it's on sale or anything? So this is a good thing. Um to like really sh- capture what's going to be on sale and for how long it will be. Yeah. Yeah, I I can't wait till some of the indie games go on sale because I'm going to be buying all of them. And like yes. I'm kind of I'm kind of at that point where I'm waiting on certain indie games to go on sale because of all the physical games that are coming. Uh yeah. so like I like I want Stardew Valley really bad. I want to, and I'm getting the physical copy of Axiom Verge, but I would like to buy uh-huh. the digital version just because I like that game so much and I think it should always be on my console. Uh, and SteamWorld Dig 2, and uh, there, there's just a bunch of indie games that are on my wish list that I just can't muster up the money to buy right now. So And, and we'll probably have this, this discussion one day, but you know, with IGN purchasing Humble Bumble, uh, I really hope that IGN pushes them to do more Switch Humble Bundles. Yeah. Like, I want them to start because the Nintendo, the Wii U ones were so good. I think the only problem was is that people have most of the games and stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, it would be a good deal for maybe every other month that IGN helps Humble Bundles switch up the games for Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was a big news story, by the way. It was them acquiring Humble Bundle. Like yeah, that's a. Uh, I mean that's that's good. I think humble. I think IGN's ability to like promote stuff and like just the money behind them will help Humble Bundle be more successful at what they're trying to do. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Where was where is that story? Uh, okay. So Game Informer is one of the first. Uh, publications to to release this news story but it's it's been blowing up everywhere now uh nintendo wants more adult games on switch says developers uh the wall street journal reports that with games like doom knights of azure 2 bride of the new moon and shinobi rifle uh, coming to switch developers feel more encouraged to release adult themed games on the platform nt creates chief executive uh takuya Azu said that he was surprised by Nintendo's reaction to their pitch to release their adult-themed arcade shooter, Galgun 2. Uh, I thought it wouldn't be possible to release such a game for the Switch, but surprisingly, Nintendo gave me positive feedback. Uh, other developers have also noted Nintendo seems to be less passive when it comes to getting adult-oriented games onto the console. Uh, for its part, Nintendo acknowledges the change acknowledges the change in direction and has adopted the view that games can be for all different kinds of people. As with books, television, and movie, this is a quote from uh, a spokesperson from Nintendo, uh, as with books, television, and movies, different content is meant for different audiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, com- uh, the company, or Nintendo isn't, st- isn't stopping at adult thing games, however. The company has been making inroads with the independent scene as well, creating quote Nindies program that highlights upcoming indie titles. Uh, so I wonder, I wonder, like, like when it, they mean adult themed games, I don't think they mean like 
Ayo, they, yeah, they mean more mat- uh, mature. I, I mean, I think like Skyrim and Doom and Wolfenstein are the games that they're aiming to get on their console, like that type of adult theme game. Like, sure, Gal Gun Two is uh, <laughs> a different kind of adult theme game, and Knights of Azure Two is a different type of adult theme game. But like, I think that this is a smart move for Nintendo to get games like this on there. I, I think they always been ready to have that. I know uh, Brandon and Isaac on Wii U had his problems, but I'm just like the, the borderline religious thing. So, you know, they had a guideline for that, but, you know, they were able to fix it, get it together and release it. Now you see Brandon and Isaac on Switch. So I think Nintendo has always been ready for M-rated games, even for adult theme games, because if you look at Bayonetta 2, you know, the way that went off, people were happy that something like that came out. Uh, even with the sexual in the window and, and all that stuff like there, I think Nintendo was fine with it. I think they see now that uh, you know, people saying that games are for everybody, different type of games. I, you know, I think Nintendo was ready. I just think third party was fearful that if they brought it, it wouldn't sell. Yeah. So, um, I, I think that's where the, the first of the fear came from was the sale, you know, business aspect. But you know, I think Nintendo had already been ready for it, so it's good that um, more Switch games and maybe some 3DS games, and you know, indies and third party will decide to bring some in- mature rated games to it, uh, to Switch because we can handle the content, you mm-hmm. know. And depending on how parents allow what, allow what their kids play, I think those kids just see it as a video game. So they'll probably be able to see the content in that way. Yeah. Plus, I think, you know, maybe Nintendo is seeing, sa- like, sales data or, like, you know, some kind of, of chunk of people that are buying the Switch are older people mm-hmm. instead of, like, parents for kids, you know. Maybe they're seeing that, oh, people in their mid to late 20s early 30s are buying this system and you know maybe it's a good idea for us to cater to that audience as well like because the kid the kid audience is always going to be there it's all kids are being born every day right but right. like as we get older you know not that we don't enjoy mario and zelda and kirby and yoshi and like all these other great games nintendo has always made Sometimes we need sometimes we need to shoot stuff. So Doom is a great game for us, and you know we want to f- fight Nazis, so we're gonna buy Wolfenstein. You know, it's 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 a good blend, and like it's 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 a unique thing for Nintendo specifically because they have the market cornered in the kid department, right? Yes. Moose and I talked about this on NGR Radio. Uh, yes, well, yesterday's release of NGR Radio, right? Where, like, uh, you know, PlayStation and Microsoft, and Microsoft is doing a little bit better with the kid stuff than Sony is with, like, su- with Super Lucky's Tales and some of the other smaller games that they've put out. But, like, you know, Nintendo really has the market cornered in the kids' department with, with Mario, with Kirby, with Yoshi. You know, like, those games are aimed four kids for the most part now mario odyssey if you want to collect everything it scales right like you know kids can have fun playing it but it's a challenge if you want to collect all thousand moons or whatever so getting uh content for for older an older audience is a smart move because they will actually have the balance that the other consoles are looking for right knack doesn't yeah knack doesn't really do it for playstation you know they kind of abandoned little big planet the most successful kind of quote-unquote cartoony game that they've had that sony's had in a while was ratchet and clank and that that and mostly adults bought that. Well, it it's because like the humor and stuff in Ratchet and Clank is more adult themed than it is aimed for kids. Like they've abandoned yeah. Jack and Daxter and Sly Cooper, which were their kind of cartoony things aimed for kids, right? So, right. Uh, you know, Nintendo is going to have it and be in a unique position where they're going to have both audiences now. Uh, you know, and like they had some of that on the Wii U, but. The problem with the Wii U was it didn't sell. So, like, 
you know, Bayonetta 2 was a great mature rated game, right? It was an amazing game. Not very many people played it because it was on the Wii U. So now that the Switch is kind of shifting directions and we're getting more mature content and third party support, you know, it's exciting. Yeah. I, I think. <laughs> We'll probably have this discussion. We always say that we're going to have this discussion. I kind of want, I kind of want to see, and you guys could even email us, me, email us about this one. I kind of want to see why people didn't give Wii U a chance, but willing to give a Switch a chance and and let it not be about games, but the system itself. And some people might say it's marketing, but I think. You know, I, you know what I it is. It's, it's the different. same. It's the same reason. I think it's the reason. I think the reason why Switch is selling so well is because a lot of people are using it as their handheld console. Mm-hmm. You know, and everybody, everybody has either owned a DS or a 3DS, right? Like it, and people love Nintendo's handheld console, and so I think a lot of people are transitioning from the 3DS or Vita specifically to a switch and i think that that's the competition and that's the system that's taking over these other two systems whether uh than like uh xbox and playstation 4 right it's just it's a lot of people are using it as their handheld system as their second console and the ability to take it with you makes it more appealing because like a lot of people want to multitask a lot of people want to watch netflix while they're playing games and you know a lot of people have started putting a second tv in their living room to so they can multitask right so like yeah it's it's a convenient console which like i know the wii u had that stuff but like for somehow it's different i don't i don't know how it's different in that respect but like I don't know. Plus, the design of the Switch, it just looks sexy and, and less like a kid's toy where, like, the Wii U kind of looked like a Fisher-Price tablet and, like, you know you know what I mean? Like, I just think it's that audience who's looking for a handheld gaming system and everybody loves Nintendo handhelds are just moving, naturally moving towards the Switch. So, I don't know. It's cool though. You I'm might, happy. You might be right. I mean, who knows if I'm right? No, we're never gonna know. We're never gonna know. But that's my theory. Yeah. It's just a theory. Uh, but man, I'm so happy. Like things are like working. I'm glad the switch is working out for people. And, yes. Like, it's still selling. Like it's still selling out. Like the other day, the other day was the first time I was in a store and I saw switches for sale, like on the shelf, and I was like. Something tells me I should just, like, have a second one at some point. Like, no, like, for real. Like, I think I should get a second one at some point just to, I don't know. I don't know what I would do with it, but just, yeah. I just, I just always like to have it, so. I, I was just waiting it for it to become more available. Like, every week, switches are just dropping in and... You know, the faster they sell, we already got back up ready to put more out because, you know, it's still they're still trying to get more out. And this, you know, it's still taking time for them to get it out, even with the Super NES. So hopefully it does pick up because it's getting in the holidays and we need like maybe about eight shipments of switches in SNES. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, So. Super Mario themed makeup line is is available for people in the beauty products. Ah. Nintendo has teamed up uh, with uh, a Japanese makeup artist. I don't know what her name is. I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shu Imuria uh, to bring Mario themed beauty products, including lipstick, eyeliner, face washes, and more. And you can buy the whole super mario box set of these supplies for 475 dollars <laughs> so. I, I, I like on how, how nintendo life how their title is <laughs> you can level up your look with super mario brothers beauty products <laughs> uh, uh, yeah so so it it, it is a uh, shoe imura imura yeah yeah 
I, I tried. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. So, okay. So, a new game has been... A couple new games have been announced for Switch. Uh, one of them is called Tiny Troopers XL. Uh, it's a twin-stick shooter. Uh, it was originally available on PC and is now going to be... Uh, actually... It's two games. Tiny Troopers Joint Ops XL includes a single-player campaigns from the original Tiny Troopers and its sequel, uh, over 70 missions in total, as well as a co-op and competitive mode. That's interesting. So that's a cool new indie game coming to Switch. Uh, also, where was the other one? There's an. I lost it. And I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at this. Uh, have you heard of a game called Jidge? I think it's J Y D G E. Oh, oh Jidge was the other Jidge. one. Jidge. Yeah, uh, it's coming October 19th. That was the other so, one. So uh, this Thursday, everybody, you can pick it up. Uh, you can choose your cybernetics, items, weapon mods, and companions from over a billion different configurations. Deal ruthless justice with lead, with lead, rockets, lasers, electricity, and other deadly tools of the law. Perform heroic feats to get extra medals and unlock new equipment. And team up with your code GH for local co-op. Yeah, that game is uh, it's an interesting name for that game. But, it's, I mean, it sounds interesting, so. Uh. Yeah, I wonder, is it, uh, I, I'm assuming it's, uh, diagonal, uh, top down diag diagonal. That's how it looks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and uh, so remember that game we talked about last week, Crazy Justice, the yes. kind of third person competitive shooter. Yes. It's gonna be. They confirm crossplay between Xbox One, PC, and Switch. So that's really exciting. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, I I enjoy good. A good uh, cross-platform game. I that game really interests. It piques my interests. Uh, so I'm gonna be looking out for that game. If you ever, if you missed last week's show, Crazy Justice. My wife is over there. Hi, wife. Uh, Crazy Justice is a third-person competitive shooter with uh, characters that have unique abilities, but also it kind of looks like if Borderlands had. Uh, Gears of War mechanics is what it looks like. Yeah. So it looks really cool, though. Like, I'm super interested in that game. Uh, so, Ed, the Super Nintendo Classic had a better launch week in Europe than Switch did. Huh? Yeah. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Yeah, this? I did. I, I, I'm still like surprised about that. Yeah, yeah. The, it's. Uh, I don't know if the Switch. Let me see. It also had a better launch in Japan, uh, but I I don't know if that's because they produced more consoles for the Super Nintendo, or they were able to produce more consoles, or if this was just like a, uh, you know, like this weird thing that happened. I don't know. Because, like, Switch has had a, such a shortage problem. Yeah. And Nintendo is trying to, you know, they've increased their production by 2 million units per month for the rest of the year. Uh, whereas, like, the Super N Nintendo Classics and uh, Fam Super Famicom Classic uh, kind of already had the architecture in place because they're using the same technology as the NES. So uh -huh. I wonder if there was just... There wasn't a shortage of those cons of those consoles, you know, where you know switches sold out every five seconds. So, uh, but in Japan, the Switch sold uh, in its first three days sold three hundred thirty thousand units. Uh, wow! And the Super Famicom sold an impressive four hundred sixty thousand units. Uh, so, in its first three days, so. Uh, yeah, I think all of our uh, Super NES is sold out the day of launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of people's like sold out, but I've also been seeing people post on Facebook and Twitter and stuff where they have found them just by walking into stores and stuff. Yeah. So uh, I'm. I mean, I'm glad there seems to be more than normal 
or more than the NES, I should say. Uh, so that's good. Good news, though. I'm glad that thing is selling well. Yes. Very popular system. I'm glad we got one. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah, I was telling uh, I was telling my uh, family when I got back that I'm just like, yeah, uh, we were able to walk in line or get in line, wait, go in, buy our system, and come out, and they still have more. Like they probably didn't sell out until we probably told people that hey, Toys R Us got like half of like four more boxes, <laughs> probably still left of them. Yeah, oh, man, what a great what a great little system this thing is. So happy. Yes. Makes me so happy. It, it's funny. Uh, Ashley Jenkins from The No, she actually talked about that. And she's just like, you know what? I never thought about, I'm just like, I never think about Toys R Us. <laughs> I'm like, th- I mean, that would be the first place I would definitely go to get a game system because nobody never think about it. Everybody thinks outside the box. And so when they go to other stores to buy stuff, uh, buy the hot popular item, it's not there. But Toys R Us is just like loaded up with them <laughs> and people just keep forgetting to go there. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm I'm just really glad we got them, but yay! The last the last news item we have on our list before we uh, kind of wrap up this episode, just because <laughs> I we have to be somewhere. But uh, <laughs> WWE 2K18, have you seen this memory debacle thing that's going on? Yeah, you're gonna need a 32 gig memory card. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I think if you are what I think this is the digital version only although you will need space uh on a, you will need a memory card for the physical version as well uh but when, if you're downloading it because i think it, that game also comes out on tuesday mm-hmm. well today i guess when this ep- episode posts it comes out today uh digitally uh, users will need a 32 gigabyte sd card at least uh for installation from the eShop and one gig of free space on the console itself uh, so that's uh, that's like I'm glad these games are coming, but that's a lot of space that you're gonna need. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have mean... I have a 128 gig memory card, and I'm fine. And I would recommend people at least get a 64 gig memory card. Yeah, but if you're planning on buying the sports games when they start coming out every year, and maybe next year they'll figure out a, a compression, a save compression system so it won't take up as much storage or whatever. But I would recommend a 128 or even like a 256 or if you have the money to throw around, that 400 gig card just came out. Uh, yeah. And like that's going to take up a... that if you, buy, if you buy WWE 2K18 and NBA 2K18... Those two games alone are going to take up a whole 64 gig memory card right off the bat. So, like, I would splurge for the bigger ones. I think the 128 cards on Amazon, um, let me see. Let me see what they are. Uh, well, why are you looking that up, Corey? Uh, Blast Blue Cross Tag Battle is coming to Switch in 2018. So, this is big because Blast Blue has only been on a Sony console. I don't think it's been on, it might have been on Microsoft uh, 360. Uh, but, you know, our system works to bring this game. So, maybe we could see this at Evo 2018 next year. Yeah. For Switch. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the 128 gig memory cards are $44.99 on Amazon. And oh, not bad. The, and the 256 ones are $109. So, I mean, it's I it's worth right. It's worth it's the 128 is definitely worth it. If you have the extra cash, I would get the 256. It's uh, it you'll be happy a year from now when you start downloading all these games. Like you'll be happy. So, yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's kind of uh, unless Ed, you found anything else that we could talk about. Uh, um, no. Uh, we'll just, we'll just be waiting for more news to come out, and knowing the show, like after we get done recording, it's just gonna be a whole bunch of news. If they announce a Nintendo Direct, they I will be upset because I'm just like you just knock me out with. Uh, I mean, they'll probably do a Nintendo Direct for a Mario Odyssey. That should be coming, and I'll be shocked if it's not. Um, I mean, it's out in, what, two weeks? 
next, next Friday. Next Friday. Yeah. So. Like if if they announce a Nintendo Direct and it was just like yeah we we just got some games that we just want to announce, and they just blow something out of the water and just be like yeah this is more of a port uh direct I'll be like oh yes I'm like if y'all bring a bear that uh and beautiful Joe and what wonderful one on one or or Kami HD or whatever y'all bring give it to me yeah <laughs> give it to me now yeah yeah I uh. Yeah, it's uh, I'm I I'm excited for the next direct. I don't I expect a lot of announcements in the next direct just because the last direct covered everything that we know. Shoot. And now we like we know Kirby's coming. Like I have a list of games that have announced for twenty at least twenty eighteen, maybe uh-huh. twenty nineteen if you include Metroid. Uh, but right now, in terms of Nintendo first party and the third party games announced for Switch, like. 2018 is filling up fast. We have Fire em- a proper Fire Emblem for Switch. We have Kirby Star Allies, uh, Project Octopath Traveler, Wolfenstein 2, uh, the Yoshi game, possibly the Pokemon game, and possibly Metroid Prime 4. Uh, you know, I could totally see both of those slipping to 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, I think they want to get Pokemon out next holiday as fast as they can. <laughs> Like, I could and, see I could see Nintendo giving the Pokemon company money to staff up for that game. Yeah, because yeah. they that will be a system seller. Like, you need that big system seller every year, and which was kind of the problem with the Wii U, right? Was like they they would have ga- great games, but nothing that would really sell systems really, except for like you know Mario 3D World was a game that would sell systems and. Wind Waker HD, but like last year was what Mario Paper Mario Color Splash and yeah, uh, what was the other game they had like Ma- what Mario was Mario Tennis last year or was that the Star Fox year? Oh, uh, Mario Tennis was last year. Okay, so I like, mean it was uh uh the year before uh, uh Paper Mario Color Splash. Okay, so. I mean, if they want to keep up this momentum and going into the next holiday season, they're going to need Pokemon. They're they're going to need it, and I I really hope like there's a lot of rumors that it's going to be called Pokemon Origins, and it's going to be a remake of Red and Blue. Uh, we shall see. Uh, I have a feeling Atlas got something up for us for Switch. Yeah, well, they announced that Shin Megami Tensei game, and they said that they would have more information on it soon. I forget. Like it was really soon. Yeah, I, but I feel like they got another game up their sleeve too. Yeah, I yeah I could I could totally see that. Uh, new D de- okay, so this was reported on uh, more info coming on October twenty third. Okay, so this will be what okay. next Monday. We'll be able to talk about that next Monday. Uh, I knew I knew they said they were going to announce some stuff uh, but yeah so that's the the next Shin Megami Tensei game so but anyways yeah this was a this is a pretty short episode but I think we packed a lot in I think we got a lot a lot in there just kind of make a box yes making a box out of my hands we just compacted it <laughs> yeah but yes uh but yeah, it's time to go. Time to go eat lunch with the 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 rents, as we say. Uh, and we and we have some friends from out of town that are there also, so it'll be nice to see them. So, uh, but Ed, where can we find you on the internet? You guys can find me on Twitter at that retro code and on NGR, uh, dot com where you can read some of my blogs. You can hear Optional Opinion. Uh, the new season is about to start, so guys, do tune in this Friday. Got a great episode which uh, coming along. Um, also, I special guest on the podcast called x to jump you guys can find that on soundcloud also i did that with a uh, writer and jr it's a playstation podcast and we talked a uh, lot of good stuff and i had to come in with of course with nintendo plot rock and defend my good old nintendo on the show but we had a great discussion guys so you guys could check out that episode 
Um, yeah, and uh, check me out on Arsenal X, uh, Power Block, and uh, Let's Pilot Play in World War One. Also, yeah, here on yes. NGR. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can find me at Corey and HD on Instagram and Twitch. You can find me at Corey and UHD on Twitter. You can find me on NGR Radio, Arsenal X, World One One, and our family of podcasts here at NGR Radio. Remember to like, subscribe, and share to our YouTube page. Uh, yes. Gone Rogue. And if you're listening to us on an audio platform, rate us, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, it's on your podcast service of choice. So find us so uh what else oh the new front page of ngrradio.com is up so if you want to check that out i urge you to do so you can find all of our shows right there you can just watch the latest episode right there so pretty excited about that and uh i i think i think that's it uh ed thursday we've got we're gonna get that we gotta get that show in on thursday to record yes. on friday so that's exciting, and I can't wait till next week's Arsenal X because I want to talk about Halo 5, and uh, I think that's it. So, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, we love you.